Perach Tesco Sabbatim, Daf Lamed Zion, sponsored the Rufu Shlema for Miriam Bas Rachem. The Gemara discusses the last halacha of the Mishnah. Rabbi Yishmoel holds one can establish a chazaka in an orchard with three harvests of different fruits in different seasons, since overall he harvested the whole orchard. He teaches two novel rulings. Number one, a chazaka does not require three full years. Number two, one is not required to harvest the whole field each year. Abai explains the dissenting opinion of the Rabbonin. The Rabbonin disagree and hold one requires three years to establish a chazaka. However, he does not have to consume a whole field each year. If an orchard consists of 30 trees, every 10 spread over an area of 2,500 square amos, harvesting 10 different trees each year suffices to acquire the whole field even though he harvested only a third each year, provided, number one, only 10 trees yield fruits each year. If all 30 trees yield fruit, harvesting a small percent is abnormal. No owner can be required to protest such an illegal occupation. Number two, the 10 trees harvested each year are scattered throughout the orchard. Otherwise, his chazaka would apply only to the area of those trees, not the whole orchard. The Gemara next discusses a case of a landowner who sells land and trees to two different people. The Gemara brings a machlokas concerning their respective rights. Rabzavid holds the tree purchaser who purchased even three trees has no share in the land under and around the trees. Although one who purchases three trees usually acquires the land under and around, this case is different because the land purchaser, unlike other land purchases, does not share in the trees. In spite of this, the landowner cannot demand from him to uproot his trees, but when they wither and die, he cannot plant new trees. The Papa disagrees. Just as when there is no land purchaser, the tree owner purchasing three trees acquires land under and around, so too in this case. Actually, he acquires this amount even for the purchase of two trees entitled to rights similar to the unlimited rights of the land purchaser. The Gemara discusses the law regarding one who sold his land, retaining at least two trees. The Gemara states that he retains ownership of the land under and around. Rabbi Akiva holds one who sells his house or field, sells it generously. This means the seller retains ownership of its pits and cisterns, but access to them must be purchased from the new owner. Rabbi Akiva holds this does not apply to a sale of land when he retains trees. He retains land under and around, so the new owner will not prevent him from planting new trees. The Gemara brings a machlokis, Rabbi Kibben Rabbonan, concerning a landowner who sold trees but retained his land. Rabbi Akiva holds one sells generously, including the land under and around in the sale, even according to Rav Zavid. His ruling that the sale of the trees does not include land is only for a sale to two different people. Since the new landowner has no share in the purchaser's trees, he is unwilling to share the land. The Rabbanan hold one generally sells stingily, selling only trees without any land. If the trees wither, he cannot plant new trees, even according to Rapapa. He stated his ruling only for one selling his land and trees to two different people. The tree owner can claim, just as the landowner has unlimited use of the land, he is entitled also to unlimited use of the trees. The Gemara discusses an occupant or seller of a field more densely planted than 10 in 2,500 amas. The Nardoi hold an occupant cannot establish a chazak on such a field because the trees are there temporarily. As soon as they grow too large for that area, they will be moved. Their yield is not considered the field's produce. Rava held their intention was to limit the law of one purchasing three trees or more, acquiring land only where the distribu- distribution of the trees is the ratio of 10 to 2,500 amas. This is similar to Machlokas regarding Kilayim in a vineyard. It is prohibited to plant grains in the vicinity of a single grapevine, but the prohibition for a vineyard is more severe. If rows of vines are planted closer to each other, 
than four Amos. Rabbi Shimon holds, since one cannot plow between them with an ox-drawn plow, they do not constitute a vineyard, only a gathering of individual vines. Rava follows his view. Chachamim hold, since the vines planted within four will eventually be uprooted, they are viewed as temporary, not part of the vineyard. If you're enjoying Daphne 5, please click on the link, be on the link below. Become, subscribe, and become a sponsor. Thank you.